Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our final uh, post-game show here in the Stanley Cup final. And of course, um, because it's our final one, uh, the Colorado Avalanche have won the Stanley Cup and uh, took one more game to try to do it, but they they do it. Um, win the Cup on, uh, you know, game six. And it was a uh, 2-1 final score. Uh, Arturi Lekkanen scores the game winner. Um, you know, bring has this OT winner to bring him to the Stanley Cup final and then scores the winner to win the Stanley Cup. So that's a pretty cool thing for him. And uh, Samco scored. McKinnon had a couple points. So he was a big part of this game. Uh, get joined in by Kerry Collins. Uh, Jim is at a wedding. So he's uh, he's not going to be joining our last post-game show. But uh, Kerry, uh, what was your impressions of this game? A uh, Stanley Cup win for the first time since 2001. Uh, it was interesting because once again, Tampa scores first. You know, leads after the first period. And Colorado just kind of did what they had done throughout most of the rest of the series, found a way to come back. And, um, you know, Nathan McKinnon in this one for sure was a driving force. It sure felt like, uh, you know, from the first period, I think he had four or five shots in the first 20 minutes, looked kind of frustrated a a little bit at times. And then, you know, sort of bounced back, got the goal to tie it up, assisted on the goal um, to give him the lead. And then, piled up a ton of minutes in the third period. But um, I mean, when you look at the box score and stuff and, you know, you look at the final score, you knew these games were probably going to be pretty tight, you know, going down the stretch. But I, I mean, they just sort of slammed the door in that third period. And it, I mean, uh, Sean McDonough, the play-by-play guy uh, for the broadcast and made a point, you know, he said, Hey, these, this team can defend too. And Mm -hmm. That was one thing that gets kind of lost on it. Everybody knows Kale McCarr's good, but, <laughs> you know, they just kind of think of Colorado as being this team that just piles up a ton of goals. I think they were the third highest scoring team during the regular season. And then they piled up a ton of points, <laughs> you know, played a ton of players with a lot of points throughout this whole postseason. But this game was sort of a microcosm of that, you know. They got the scoring from the big guns. They got the depth scoring when they needed it. And they played pretty good defense. And Kemper was good enough. Mm -hmm. Like, Kemper was really good in this game. And that was just sort of everything that they had going for them in the season kind of crammed into one game. It was kind of neat to see, you know, a series wrap up like that. Yeah, well, let's talk about that third period. I mean, like you said about good defense. That third period was probably the masterclass in in defending and making sure that the team doesn't get any pressure because you know Colorado was still four checking they were sending in two four checkers they're pressing the lightning at the blue line um what do you think about that performance in the third period defensively yeah I, I mean you hit the nail on the head there with the four check they just uh, they weren't gonna stop like they were gonna like every inch was gonna they were gonna fight for and um I just think, you know, they gave up four shots in that period. And I mean, it's not like Tampa Bay was, you know, just sort of going through the motions or anything. Like it was just, they made life so hard for them and to hold a team like Tampa Bay, you, that clearly knows what it takes to win one of these things over the last couple of seasons. And you knew they were going to be a tough out. They like, they were not taking their foot off the gas. The four check is what won them the first two games. Um, in Colorado to take the two nothing series lead. Um, it's been a driving force, particularly behind guys like uh, Gabriel Landeskog and Valerie Nishuskin um, were the driving force behind that thing. And Nishuskin, man, he's an unrestricted free agent now. And boy, yeah. he added some money to his yeah. next contract <laughs> with these last couple of series. But that third period, it was all about the four check. They just weren't going to give anything up. They kept throwing it and Adam and th- it didn't matter who was on the ice. They were just going to make it impossible for them to get out of the zone. And that's just sort of, you know, what it looked like, you know, the clock just kept ticking down and all, like I kept looking at the clock and there'd be three and a half minutes, like head gone. And you're like, Holy cow, they're just chopping yeah. this up, you know, and they just ate that clock and, you know, and they did it with that four check. And then, um, Camper didn't have to do a whole lot. And that's, I mean, that's all you can ask for from a team. I mean, if you're going to forecheck like that, and it's been one of the best things you've had going for the entire postseason, 
you know, any goalie will take that. Like, <laughs> give me less than five shots in any period, and, and it's good with me. But it was interesting, you know, and kind of poignant to me that that's the, you know, the third period because, you know, after the game, they were talking to the players and all the work that, you know, over the last few years to get them here. And they just weren't going to stop until, like, you know, run through the tape, run through the finish line. And that's exactly what they did. So it was good for them. And I mean, it was a good game by Kemper. And but yeah, that, that, that third period was just massive. Yeah. And, and that's, like I was saying during, during the game, that's how you defend. I mean, everyone thinks about, you know, so many teams do that, you know, shell and just let the other team keep coming at you. That doesn't, I mean, that's not the way to do it. You do it how Colorado does it. You keep attacking. Don't let the other team get any pressure and any momentum because that's how they go and tie the game. So, I mean, th- this is how you defend a lead. I mean, 100%. So, um, great job by the Avalanche to shut that down and, you know, win 2 1. I mean, that they can win games 2 1, too. I mean, that's, they showed it in this game for sure. So, uh, you know, great job by the Avalanche and definitely deserving of that Stanley Cup win. Let's talk about the Conn Smythe Trophy, which, uh, you know, everyone was kind of, it was up in the air who would win it. McCarr was the favorite and he ends up winning it. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, we've said so much about Kale McCarr throughout this season, um, throughout these post games. Um, you know, they were talking about him looking like he didn't have his best game. Uh, he was, he looked like he was struggling defensively a bit, um, had a bit of problems on that first goal, but he had a masterful uh, playoff. So, uh, what do you think about him winning the, the Conn Smythe? Yeah, when you look, I mean, it's weird that when you get to a box score after any game and you're like, oh, he he didn't have an assist? Like, yeah. <laughs> it just seems like you could just, you know, check that box before every game. But, um, I mean, uh, from start to finish in this playoffs, he was arguably the most important player on this team. I mean, that four-game sweep of Nashville – in the first round, he had 10 points. Yeah. Um, you know, he, you know, first couple of games against St. Louis was sort of hanging back. He wasn't really playing like McCarr, and then he just took off and blasted off again. Um, I mean, every series, he left a footprint. You know, he left his stamp on every single one of these series, and, um, it, you know, they just don't do it without him. And, hmm. I mean – I don't think anybody would have been surprised if they would have said it was McKinnon, you know, with the 13 goals and stuff, another big game in this closeout game, but uh, you know, 29 points by a defenseman through, I think they only had 20 games in the postseason. So, I mean, that's a pretty impressive run, especially for a guy. And it wasn't just that. I mean, yeah. he, you can't say, Oh, this guy single-handedly did this, but he single-handedly shut down Connor McDavid. Yeah. I mean, he was one of the, re- he was a huge reason why they swept that team. And I don't know how many other teams could have swept Edmonton in that spot, but, uh, you know, going in, that was a big talking point. Oh, what, you know, who's going to get the better of that matchup. And um, I, you know, personally thought Connor McDavid was going to get it, but yeah. Kale McCarr just like completely slowed him down. And, you know, uh, that was such a huge part of that series. So, I mean, you can point at any series and if, you know, he left an impression on it. It was hard to say that he was in any one of Colorado's series. It was hard to say he wasn't the best player in each one of the series. And that's, what's going to lead you to win an Akan Smythe trophy for sure. Yeah. Well, they said it was, he was one of the he's very rare breed to win this Akan Smythe, the defenseman at his age. So uh, great job by McCarr and uh, you know, and it, he definitely deserving of that Con Smythe. I mean, there was, like you said, McKinnon could have definitely got it too. Um, but yeah, McCarr was probably a favorite for a while now. I mean, as I'm talking about. Yeah. And I mean, you look at the other thing, like, you know, this kid's only 23 Yeah, and this is a pretty darn good week for him. I mean, he gets the Norris trophy on Wednesday and then tonight he gets the Con Smythe and the, gets to carry the Stanley cup around. Yeah. So, and it's like, gosh, when I was 23, I was just trying to figure out what the heck I was going to do like the next day, you know, and (laughs) it's pretty impressive, you know, that I just remember a few years ago, his first career game was in the playoffs and he scored a goal and it was just like, oh, here he comes. And then he has just steadily stepped up every year. He's gotten better and better and better. This, I, I mean, 
this was his best year far and away, I, you know, to, to win a Norris trophy against two guys that, I mean, Roman Yossi scored 96 points, Victor yeah. Hedman scored 85. And it's like, <laughs> sorry, you took third, you know, like, yeah. it's, I, I mean, it was such a good group and for him to win it is quite a testament to like how far he's come. And I, I mean, just the sky is the limit for this kid. And so you just yeah. look at these playoffs, he's just so steady and so calm. And I mean, I just think, uh, yeah, but a pretty big season. Like I said, it was a pretty big last few days for him too. Yeah, I he, he well he's he's amazing to watch too. Probably the best, probably the best defenseman to watch as a you know as a skater too. So my gosh, so he definitely deserves to have those three trophies uh, to 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 raise, right? Sure. Let's talk about the captain uh, Gabriel Landeskog. Ten years as the captain, he was what they say, 19 when he took over the seat. Um, yeah. He, you know, this is a long time coming for him. Only the second Swedish born captain to win the cup. Uh, first, of course, Nick Lidstrom. Um, Kerry, what do you think about uh, Landeskog of how he played this playoffs and uh, finally winning a Stanley Cup? Yeah, I mean, that he was one of the guys that, you know, I mean, he's played on some crappy teams. And he's captained some like bad teams. He's dealt with multiple coaches. He dealt with the whole fiasco of Patrick Wabi and the coach, all that stuff. And I mean, he has been through uh, ups and downs. When you look at Jared Bednar's first year, that team was absolutely terrible. You know, yeah. like they were last by a hundred miles. <laughs> you know, they were so bad. And then just boom, three years later, he's back, you know, carrying around the Stanley Cup. And when you look at the season he had, you know, uh, when you look at the season he had this year, I mean, he scores 30 goals for the first time, even though he missed like 30 games, uh, you know, he had just a, such a monster season. And then he was so important for them in the playoffs too. And I, I mean, you talk about the flash and of a guy like Nathan McKinnon and, or Miko Rantanen even, or, and then, or Kale McCars just all around, you know, dominance all over the ice. And Landis Gog is more than just the captain. He's the guy, you know, digging it out of the corner, getting the crap knocked out of him in front of the net. He's yeah. that, you know, one like mainstay that they have. And, uh, uh, you know, right in front of the net that causes trouble, that that's what makes them so, that's what makes that top line so tough to defend. And, you know, you look at the playoffs, you know, he had 11 goals in the playoffs too. And it's just, he's so important to this team. And a lot of people overlook him just because of some of the, you know, guys that are getting votes for the Hart Trophy. And yeah. there's a Norris Trophy winner now on his team too. So, uh, you know, he's, an integral part to this team and he has been for a decade and you know all of everything that he's done is kind of led up you know led up to something like this so it was good to see a guy like that uh be able to lift the cup because he has just the, been the epitome over the last 10 years of roller coaster like he yeah. was on a couple of pretty good teams and he was on some really stinkers and then the last three years they've been really good so it uh it just kind of shows you that sometimes it does come back around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my extension, Nathan McKinnon, who's uh, now this, the, this a uh, Cole Harbor, another Cole Harbor boy wins the Stanley cup. Uh, Sidney Crosby was of course twice. Um, but what do you think about Nathan McKinnon? I mean, he stepped up, had two points. Like we mentioned, had two points in this game. Uh, they're saying he was kind of frustrated. It was only his first goal off his stick in the Stanley cup final. So <laughs> I always think about Nathan McKinnon. Yeah, and I mean, that was a pretty typical goal for him. I like that uh, he sits over there on that power play. He can't, you know, if they can get it set up, he wants that slap shot. Um, and you can ask Eric Cernak how devastating that slap shot is yeah. because I, I think he took three or four of them in this series and not one of them looked like uh, he sort of shook it off. I mean, each time it looked like, oh, my gosh, this – this guy's skating over to the bench and he's dead, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, some of those look pretty nasty and it for him too, you know, you, everybody talks about, you know, the press conference at the end of last year where he said, Hey, I haven't won anything going into, I'm going into my ninth year. I haven't won anything except to yeah. use a little more colorful language, but you know, and this was a tough year for him too. You know, he missed, he missed about a, a dozen or more games. I mean, 
he had COVID. He had a couple of nagging little things. I mean, he still ended with almost 90 points. Uh, I think he had 88 points this year. He scored north of 30 goals again, but it's just like, he was just sort of like going through the process. Just, you know, he said multiple times during these playoffs how upset he was after last year, but he came to the realization in the off season that just cause you work your tail off for something doesn't mean you're just going to get it, you know, yeah. like sometimes it just doesn't happen. And he was a little bit more mellow. It seemed like going into this season and then the playoffs started and it was like, okay, like unchain the monster. Here he comes, <laughs> here he comes. Yeah. And um, it was good to see him get that goal. And it was such an important at such an important point of the game for them. You know, they're sitting there trying to solve Vasilevsky, which has been a thorn in their side for the last couple of games. Yeah. And then he finally got one by, and it was kind of like, you know, when they're all skating around, he's kind of like, okay, let's go. And, um, you know, then he assists on the next goal too. So for him to get a performance like that, when I, you know, you had heard that he was kind of frustrated to have a performance like that in a clinching game, you know, was pretty big for a pretty big player for Colorado. Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, it's, it's great that he stepped, you know, he steps up at the best time too, which is, uh, you know, you don't want to go back to, to Colorado tied uh, three, three. I mean, it's just, you're asking for trouble. <laughs> that's just, yeah. that's just how it is against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So you had to finish here uh, on the road. So I mean, I'm sure they're fine with it. Uh, before we wrap up, I want to talk about a big thing like we've talked about throughout this is the depth. And, uh, of course, Arturi Lepidin scores the Stanley Cup winning goal, a guy they brought in at the deadline. Uh, you look at Cogliano, really key guy throughout the playoffs here, too. Uh, another guy brought in at the deadline. Um, you know, what do you think this depth? I mean, we talk about the Stars. We talk about Makara won the Conn Smythe. But I think the depth has should be by extension winning the Conn Smythe as well. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, another guy brought in at the deadline was Josh Manson. He assisted yeah. on that winning goal too. You know, you've got two guys that have just been here since March, <laughs> you know, setting up and you got McKinnon in the middle of that play too, of course, which yeah. goes a long way. But, uh, you know, you've got two guys on a cup clinching goal that you brought in at the deadline. You've got a guy like Cogliano that was brought in to help out on the penalty kill. He got a shorthanded goal during the playoffs and was great on the penalty kill pretty much throughout the entire postseason. Um, another guy they brought in was Nico Sturm that gave him a little bit of depth, like centering one of those bottom six lines. And then, uh, you know, just other dudes like Darren Helm that they brought in. And uh, Jack Johnson was like yeah. – this dude they brought in on like a tryout contract, gave him a contract. He scored their first goal of the season in the yeah. first game. <laughs> and you're kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy isn't a thousand years old. So it's like, uh, well, he still is. But yeah. it's, uh, I mean, it's just like every move that it seemed like just about every move that uh, Joe Sackick made this year, whether it was at the deadline or before the season, I know a lot of people thought you know the resource not a lot some people thought oh Brandon Sodge they should have brought him back or st and stuff like that but it was just like he did all the right things with all of these pieces uh, I know that uh, many people were wondering why they brought Nishuskin back you know and to stuff like that and it was for a season like this you know he scores a ton of goals he was massive in the playoffs yeah um, it was just all of those pieces and I mean every single one of those things, every single one of those names goes into that depth that we're talking about. And it was, I mean, it was top to bottom. We aren't just yeah. talking about, Oh, wow. Their third line was really good. No, it was like, they were getting it from their, def every defensive pairing. They were getting it from every line from, you know, guys like Nico Sturm and Andrew Cogliano all the way to the back end of guys like Jack Johnson and Eric Johnson, who's, yeah. you know, he's been around forever too. So and then even when a guy like Samuel Gerard gets hurt and, and leaves a guy like Bo Byram yeah. steps in and had, you know, a pretty good playoffs. I mean, these were some of, some of these games were some of the best games that I've seen him play for yeah. Colorado. And uh, I mean, you know, you're going to have to have that depth if you're going to win this thing, but there's really, really, you know, 
pulled them through when they needed it and came up with some big goals when they needed it throughout the postseason. Yeah, I mean, like we've said multiple times, depth uh, wins cups, and that's and that's that happens again. Uh, you need the depth to win. You, your stars aren't always going to do it. So, um, big big part of their their run and to win the cup. So, you know, depth is massive. Um, before we you know end here, talking about you know Tampa, uh, Corey Perry. I mean, bad feel for this guy. He goes to three teams and he's on the losing end each time. The last three years. I mean, yes, he's won a cup. I mean, but I mean, it must be hard to have three years in a row uh, being on the losing side. Yeah. I, and I mean, he is still a scrappy, feisty player. You know, I think the what they won in 2007 when he was with the Ducks. So yeah. it was for him. I, yeah, I don't care who you are, whether you've won a cup or not. This just has to totally like stink. Yeah. And I mean, you go, he loses, he's on the cup losing team three years ago with uh, Dallas. And then he comes to Montreal, loses the cup again, and then says, you know what, to heck with it. If you can't beat them, join them. I'm going to Tampa Bay. Um, <laughs> they, you know, he has a decent postseason. He was pretty good at this series too. And then he just comes up short again. And he's got to be sitting in that locker room going, what? What do I got to do? <laughs> like, it's join the Avalanche now. to like win this thing. Yeah, and it was just you, you don't want to say it's unlucky because it's. I mean, there's hundreds of other dudes that are like, oh, poor Corey Perry. He got to yeah. play for the Stanley Cup three years in a row. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like, but part of that goes to show, um, what he brings to the table. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's a coincidence that the last three teams that he was on made it to the Stanley cup final. I mean, he's an integral part of that, whether, yeah. and it's not just points. He's a locker room guy too, and all that stuff and a big motivational voice. So, I mean, it's, it's more than just, you know, feeling bad for Corey Perry, which I certainly do. Like, yeah. I just think that has to be gut wrenching. I mean, uh, you see how excited these guys are for winning it for the first time. I mean, I think Burakovsky and Darren Helm, Andre Burakovsky and Darren Helm are the only two guys that had won it before on the yeah. Colorado roster. And it's just, <laughs> you know, uh, all, you saw how devastated everybody was. And I mean, just for losing it three times in a career, I think would just be absolutely devastating let alone three years in a row so yeah. yeah it's tough for Corey Perry but I mean just when you look at those teams all I think the better team won all three yeah. of those series too so yeah, hopefully that gives him some some solace you know yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> makes him feel well, better but I doubt it will no, just, no probably not um I think he should just sign in Colorado and see if it gets <laughs> Or just say, Keep to going. Heck with yeah, it. eventually, yeah, just I'm going to Ottawa, screw it, like, <laughs> like whatever, <laughs> or just, just hang, out, hang out the skates and just go and retire. I don't know, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I mean, Perry still has a lot of game left, I think he could still play, so I think he probably will re sign with someone, um, signing the offseason with someone, um, yeah. So, I <laughs> but uh, it must be hard for him to, to lose three in a row, but. You know, yeah, on three Stanley Cup uh, contenders and uh, was a big part of all three. So that that's a big thing for him anyway. And uh, I guess I no solace. There's probably no solace to him, but, you know, it's it's it, it's still an accomplishment to do it. Yeah. And I mean, when you look at this avalanche team, I mean, it's arguably the best team that the franchise has ever had. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, they won the most games in the regular season than they ever had. And. Um, just how dominant they were throughout these playoffs. It didn't really feel even this series, maybe a little bit after game five, but this is the Stanley cup final, but even the St. Louis blues series just didn't really feel like they were in that much trouble. And yeah. um, after those first couple of games, even when Colorado, it was tied in round two with St. Louis one-to-one -one going to St. Louis for game three, you just sort of felt like, okay, well, they still got these guys. Yeah. And, you know, once Kadri's goal went in to put them up three to one, you felt like, is this team going to lose three games in a row? Like, you just didn't yeah. really feel like that was something that was going to happen. At least I didn't. And I'm sure there's plenty of people in Florida that thought, yeah, that can happen. You know, we can do it because they've come back 
from deficits before, maybe not a three, one in the Stanley cup final, yeah, which has happened like once ever. So <laughs> it's like, I mean, it was good to see, uh, you know, and Joe Sackick have a huge part of it again, yes, you know, he's yeah. the one guy that built the team and this is arguably the best team they've ever had. And I mean, there's going to be some old timers that, probably without a ruffle feathers or whatever but it's just i mean most wins in the regular season they lit it they lit everybody up in the playoffs it seemed like and i mean this is just a really really good team and they were favorites to win the cup from the first time vegas laid odds out and they had to and they sort of just held that the entire rest of the way and to be able to cross the finish line in the nhl for the stanley cup it's one of the hardest things to do just because uh, we see it every year. We see eight seeds beat one seeds and it's just a tough tournament to win. And they they did it It convincingly in 20 games. You got their 16 wins in 20 games. Yeah. And they haven't, they didn't lose back to back. They didn't lose two games in a row throughout the whole Stanley Cup. uh, Yeah. I lost one game, one game at home or one game on the road. I mean, Uh, and didn't lose back to back games throughout the tournament. That's a, you know, that's a, pretty big accomplishment for sure yeah yeah so congratulations to the stanley cup winners colorado avalanche um thanks everyone for joining us on every post game show here and you know we appreciate it uh, make sure you're liking the you know the video and you know subscribing to our channel we'll be having a bunch more content throughout the, re- the post season um not post season uh, the off season we're in the off season now um <laughs> time of the draft we're gonna have the draft stuff we're gonna have free agent stuff season previews and so lots of stuff coming for, for the channel. Um, again, thanks for joining us uh, on the post game. Thanks, Carrie, for joining our post game coverage throughout the playoffs. Uh, you're in every series. So uh, <laughs> thanks for, <laughs> for getting this up. And, uh, you know, too bad we didn't have Jim here to finish off this series. But uh, again, thanks to Jim Bay as well for, for joining our post games every time. Uh, of course, misses the, cl- the clincher. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just how it goes. So. Thanks, everyone, and uh, we will see you next time on another video on the Hawk Raiders YouTube channel.